1 minus p where p is the probability cumulative probability okay divided by gamma okay divided by gamma 1 minus e to the power 1 minus gamma gamma is your that whether that 5% or whatever the uh, var that you have taken so if you see over here let's say you are estimating uh, at 5% ex expected loss so this gamma will be 5% if you are estimating at 1% your gamma will be 1% so depending on that this weighting function is taken so what you have is this is the weighting function you have taken then you have to multiply that quantile okay so you have this quantile it is you have to multiply this quantile with this weight okay so once whatever this value that you have got the quantile that you have let's say 98% 97% you have to multiply these two okay to get this value okay and then you to take the summation or you will integrate okay so in case of expected loss what we have taken see just understand that in case of expected loss how this formula become takes shape in case of expected loss what we are saying is we are taking only this value okay so we are interested in So we are interested in those values which are only on this side. Okay. Okay, only on this side. In fact, like I think a gamma, I took a wrong example. Gamma 5% is not exactly this. Okay, but we don't have to worry. Expected loss, what we are saying is it will give weightage to these all values. What is the weight of this value, this value, this value? It assigns a weight of zero. So what it says is the weight function is very clear. It says that the weight is zero when the alf when the when alf when these values are greater than your alpha, let's say five percent. However, it assigns some weight, a weight when this is less than five percent. So this is actually it is one minus one by alpha. This is what the weight is given by the expected loss. Don't worry about this how this weightage function are designed. So it what it says is it gives a weight of zero. For all probabilities that are less than x. Okay. Now what I have done is like I have used this and created one Excel sheet just to give you an idea about how they have done it case of the book. So what they did in book was they have taken Okay, one question. Sorry, I missed one question. So, Vineet has asked, can we take infinite vars and then integrate? Okay. Yeah, so what will happen is like uh, all of these var measures, if you see beneath, is, are actually your uh, com considering some quartile measure, some percentile measures. So, what happens is that integration of that is uh, difficult. However, like if you can come up with a var uh, formula, okay, typically what will happen is this var formula will be based on the distribution. So if you can plug that var formula distribution formula, then you can integrate. There is no problem at all. Okay, so if you take, if you have a normal distribution, you can put that uh, normal distribution. Uh, if you see with that probability, you will find that, okay, the normal curve will be mentioned. You can integrate that. There will be no issue. Now this is the, a, a, what we have taken is in the book they have taken gamma as 0.05 okay? and the weighting function we have say, used the same formula. So this same formula is taken as the weighted function. Okay? What we are saying is we will have alpha, alpha is this 0 0.1, 0 0.2 etc. So please note that this alpha is exactly going from, uh, from 0.1 till 0.9 okay here we are taking a very simplistic we are taking only from 0 0.1 to 9 you can make it more okay you can take the number of slices are 10 here you can make more slices so what happens is if it is 0 0.1 what is the this value what is this value it will be given by the norm normal distribution inverse function so you will get the the var value will be this normal val, normal inverse right so norm s inverse we have taken so what we will do is we'll take this norm as inverse okay of this and we get a minus 1.28 value right right remember if it's 0 0.5 what is this value this is nothing but a zero 
right so at point 0.5 it is 0 right so that is how the values are taken okay and then weightage function now with gamma is 0 0.05 what they are saying is this gamma is this weight function is dependent on this alpha as well as gamma so in the start it is given weight of 0 only this is 0 0 right it starts gaining weight only from this point okay so what will happen is this weight function value is known okay i can get this weight into weight into alpha into where all of these are as of now zero so if you take the average what we have is average of all this value i have taken so this comes to 0.4227 so this is your expected loss so it is a coherent risk measure just i am trying to change this okay so what i will do is instead of putting this okay, let me try to change so just I will not change this. Okay. What I will do is I'll just copy paste this. Okay. And let us change this value. So we are making 0 0.1, 0 0.12, and let us see doing the changes over here. Okay. Let me make it to 0.99. I will go till 0 0.99 because one definitely is not to be taken okay so what we'll do is we'll extend this to 0.99 okay and then we will extend this weight function also to 0.99 okay we'll in fact we'll extend we should have extended everything okay what we have is this and then if we have to compute the value okay so what i will do is i will take Please know that you just need to know the process. Okay, that's why I'm like, so if you see now it is 1.7438. Here the risk, the expected loss measure was 0.422. The one, sorry, not expected loss. One of the coherent risk measure okay, was 0.4227. Here I have taken 1.7438. That means as I have increased the number, okay, the number of this, I have got a better value. In fact, I would have taken I could have taken it from starting from 0 0.01. That would have been better measure, right? I could have taken 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and that would have been, if you see, that would have been given you much better measure. Right? So these are the values we can take. So we can make it up till 0.99. Okay, just I'm just you can see it in the book also how they have taken this measure so what happens is if you take this value and then compute the average now it has come as 1.58 right? so that means the average is becoming more and more right so the coherent risk measure value is becoming more okay so what we see is if you see the next step okay what happens when the number of slices increases okay so this is like a reference of table 3.4 from the book so we have taken this taken the 10 slices it became 4227 so if you see this measure okay 4227 was taken when the slices were 10 if you take the number of slices to be 100, okay, this is what we computed. We took 100 slices and it became 1.58527, right? So this is the number we, we took, right? So what we are saying is, as you increase this number of slices, okay, what happens is the where the coherent risk measure estimate will become better and better, better and better. So the five five lakh slices, it has become eight five three six. So what happens is there is an additional, uh, so this error is reducing, re error is getting reduced as you are increasing more and more. Okay, right? Any doubt? Then table 3.5 of the book, it says that a better approach, like if you see that if you increase the number of slices by two times, okay, 100 became 200, then 400, 800, what happens? Okay, so the estimated expectoral risk measure is 5853. Then it becomes 70, 74, 77, 51. So what we see is if you see the difference between these two, 7074 and 5853, it is 2114. It says that if you half, okay, if you, the error that comes, if you half from here to here, 
okay so from 200 if you make the slice to be half of that this is the additional error you are bringing this is your halving error so if you from 400 if you make 200 you will bring this additional error so this is your halving error right this is your halving error again like reference is on the book so i've just taken from the book okay right any doubt we have seen it in front of our eyes we have seen that how if i make 100 slices we are exactly getting whatever they have estimated the risk measure Now what the next aim statement says that describe the method of estimation of the standard error. Okay. So what is the method of estimation of this standard error okay. for coherent risk measure. Please note that again here we have to just describe the method. There is no requirement of computation. However, when you are seeing the book, you will get scared because the formula that are kept for this estimation of the standard errors are huge okay. I, I i frankly believe that since it is only given the description you would not be required to do any computation of this okay but let us try to understand this process i will also give you okay what exactly is this uh, aim statement saying okay it requires uh, i'm i will just go slightly uh, uh, some uh, formula here and there i will explain but you are not required to uh, remember anything just to understand the process I will give that okay so what we say is here we never know the true value of the risk measure in fact you never ever know we are just trying to get a best estimate of the risk measure okay so we are trying to get a estimate okay we are saying okay best however what happens is you are getting the estimate so there that means there has to be some error so what is expected is that you get an estimate of the risk measure also you get the expectation of what is the error in your computation okay so going back to your part one it is actually you are trying to create a confidence interval of the risk measure so let's say you say that okay the where that i have computed is 10 million dollar okay but are you 100 percent sure that that is the where no right that is an expectation of the risk measure so what we say is you will try to create a confidence interval and you say that okay I have said that 10 million dollars is the VAR but it can be anything between 15 to 25 right that is what you are trying to get a confidence interval that confidence interval will get created only when you know the error okay now there are various methods to estimate the standard error we need to know in the book they have followed one bean method we have to go to this okay so after you compute the standard error you compute the standard uh, uh, confidence interval of the VAR. We'll cover what is the, the approach that is given in the book. So if you see the, the approach that is given in the book, okay, what they are saying is, okay, they are saying that the confidence interval of the VAR is given as QE Q plus standard error of Q okay, into Z alpha. Okay. So what we are saying is your VAR would be Okay, greater than this value, less than this value and your where would be greater than this value. So this is actually creation of the confidence interval of the where. So what you are saying is, you are saying, okay, I have taken this where, but the higher value is this. So this is your higher value and lower value is estimated to be this. So we are saying that a where would be in between these two measure. Now what we are saying is what is the value of this Q? The value of this Q is 1.65 if you have taken the 95% VAT okay? and obviously Q will be equal to 2.33 in case of 99% VAR. So in case you are taking 99% VAR 2.33. One of the problem, one of the thing that the author ignored uh, in this is confusion in the minds of the uh, readers okay what happens is q is this okay the author took 90 percent confidence interval okay so 90 percent confidence interval if you are trying to create 90 percent confidence what is the value of z at 90 percent